Hello. Welcome back to the course on literary theory. I hope you all are doing well. Today I'll briefly talk about John Crow Ransom's essay, Criticism, Inc., or Criticism Incorporated. Uh, the essay will also be uploaded as an additional resource under this video, and my hope is that you'll read the essay and then watch this video, and this video will work as a supplement to the essay. Now keep in mind that John Crow Ransom, if you watched my lecture on new criticism, is considered the father of American new criticism, and he actually wrote a book called New Criticism. Now in this particular essay, he lays down certain uh, foundations of what would eventually become new criticism. So he starts with the questions about who is qualified to write about literature. So what he goes into then is that there are philosophers who write about literature, there are historians who write about literature, and then some people quote the authors of primary literary works themselves. But what he is suggesting is that all three constituencies that he has named are not necessarily the experts in literary criticism. Okay, so why is it the philosophers are not experts? His argument is that they philosophers deal with bigger questions, right? They see the forest but not the trees in it. So since they deal with fundamental questions, their approach cannot be specific enough to study literature critically. Historians, similarly, what he, he's suggesting is that they have a larger view of historical events and that cannot apply to you know, specifics of literary genres and literary studies. And authors or poets themselves, he says, the reason they can't explain their own work critically is because their approach is mostly uh, intuitive, right? They write, but it's very hard to ask someone, how did you come up with? Because they may not have a rational explanation of it. And then he goes on to say that that means that the work of literary criticism must be performed by the specialist, and in his view, those are the English professors. And that's why he's suggesting that they should become incorporated. Now, what does an incorporated uh, you know, entity mean? That it follows certain set of rules. It has a uh, body of uh, what you can rules and regulations. So by literature professors becoming incorporated as critics, what he's suggesting it is that not only that they should take it upon themselves to become experts in literary studies and literary interpretation, but they should have by and large a body of rules that they apply to the text so that there is a system that emerges out of it, so that literary criticism can become more systemic and less individual. Now, do also keep in mind the historical background of his work, because when he's writing, at that time the English departments are competing with other departments to assert their own special status. And you cannot do that if your discipline is too interdisciplinary. You don't want to be equated with historians. You don't want to be equated with philosophers, right? So that's why he's trying to develop this specific mode of reading literature. Then in this essay also there is a critique of the humanists as well as the Marxists, right? And, and you know, the materialistic readings of the text as well as the humanistic reading, liberal humanistic readings of the text, they also don't tend to be specialized. But I do urge you to read it more carefully and tease out how is he arguing that. And then he also recommends here a curriculum developed by Professor Crane at University of Chicago that he thinks could be the kind of English curriculum that could be developed to train literary critics or to train our students to read carefully. Now keep in mind that that curriculum was the first of its kind and it encouraged a course or a body of work that would make the readers of texts in a literature classroom into specialists. All those pressures were on these scholars. 
So this roughly is the summary of the text itself, right? If you read it carefully, that's what, what I've just summed up is what he is saying as to why literature professors, they are best qualified to do it. It's their expertise and it's their job and that they should come together. They should become incorporated so that there is a systemic English department specific way of reading literary text. Now towards the end of this essay, he tries to theorize how could one go about reading a poem in a certain specific system. And he uses the word paraphrase, right? The idea that one could read a text and then paraphrase it in specific ways and then they deal with it. Now read that part really carefully and I'll explain in my next lecture because that is what Cleanth Brooks, even though he was a contemporary and a colleague, I think, of Ransom and other new critics, that's where Cleanth Brooks picks up, right? When he writes his famous essay, The Heresy of Paraphrase. So this Ransom essay, uh, I would say, is a seminal essay in the inauguration of new criticism. And I strongly urge you to read it carefully. And my this brief lecture, I mean, it doesn't explain the lecture point by point. But what I've tried to give you is a brief summary of my understanding of it and how I teach it. Now, if you're going to teach this essay, what has worked the best for me is that I encourage the students to read carefully, to highlight the essay. And then I put it within the historical context of when it was written. You know, the pressures on the English departments to justify themselves to universities for funding, for being considered viable academic departments and disciplines because English was not yet established. It was competing with the classics and history and social studies, right? But there has been a reversal now, if you read that essay and look at the English departments, let's say in United States, Britain, even, of course, in India and Pakistan, increasingly the English departments do not claim to be just departments that teach about texts and how to read them specifically. They have become more interdisciplinary. So it has become acceptable in English departments now to use philosophy, to use anthropology, you know, all the knowledge is produced in social sciences, right? And that's, of course, the difference since this essay was written and where English studies is, broadly speaking, in most of the world. So my own field of study, for example, post-colonial studies, will never claim that we are just readers of the text. I mean, think of it, any text that is written about India, we can't just te teach it from a Eurocentric textual point of view. We have to give people, our students, the history of colonialism, India's own vast and deep history, its cultures, right? And it's only after we introduce them to all those nuances you know, of one of the most complex cultures in the world is that we can teach, you know, fire in the mountain or even R.K. Narayan and people like that. So these are some of my brief words about John Crow Ransom's essay, Criticism Incorporated. If you have any questions when you read the essay, please send them my way and I'll be happy to answer them. And as I mentioned in the beginning, a copy of the essay is attached to this video as an additional resource. I strongly urge you to read it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time in my next lecture.